Hey, what's going on everyone? Today we're going to be testing out and checking out the specs and features and how the Magicycle Deer performs. Now this is Magicycle's new bike. This is the their first new release in 2023. Very excited to be testing this bike out. If you notice here, it has a suspension in the front and also has a suspension in the rear now. So that is really awesome. Don't have to put a suspension seat post in there to get the comfort and the seat height will stay lower being that you don't have to do that. The seat height on this bike is actually a half inch lower than their Cruiser and their Cruiser Pro, which is really nice. And like I said, has the rear suspension already in the bike. So gonna be really nice for shorter riders and giving you a lot more comfort than the Cruiser and the Cruiser Pro. So the first test we're gonna do here today is we're gonna go up this uh, small paved hill here and see what kind of speed we can maintain. I have a 100% fully charged battery right now, so we'll see what kind of speed we can get coming up this hill. And if you guys seen my most recent hill test video, you'll notice that the original Cruiser came up this hill at nine miles per hour. The Cruiser Pro was 10 and the Ocelot Pro was 11. So let's see if this could at least stay the same as the Cruiser Pro at 10 miles per hour, or we'll see if it beats the Ocelot Pro at 11. And actually that is the fastest bike that I currently have that will go up this hill at 11 miles per hour. It's the only hub motor I have that will do that at 11 miles per hour. So. Lots of power here guys, 52 volt, 20 amp hour battery. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in pedal assist five. Throttle only. And we're gonna see what speed we can maintain. 12, 13, 4, 15, 16, 15 at the end of the guardrail. 13, 12, 11, 10, so 10 miles per hour, which was exactly the same as the Magicycle Cruiser Pro. The Ocelot did beat it by one mile per hour. And I did notice that the uh, cruise control just kicked in. So if you hold the throttle for so many seconds, the cruise control will kick in. And I'm at this point, I doubt or don't know if there's a way you can disable that. I know on their other bikes, you couldn't. So there we go there, there's cruise control. You just hit the throttle, it'll disengage it. And I believe if you start pedaling, it'll disengage it. Let's check that. All right, so I got the cruise control engaged again. I'm gonna start pedaling and it took off and disengaged. So yes, uh, if you hit the brake, hit the throttle or start pedaling, it will disengage your cruise control. So let's test out the braking system on this. Let's get going down this hill a good bit. 20 mile an hour and I could lock the back brakes up easily I can't really grab the front brake right now because I'm holding the GoPro, but very nice braking system here, guys. You have Bangle hydraulic disc brakes on 180 millimeter rotors on both the front and the rear of the bike. And the stopping power is excellent, just as I would have expected out of these brakes. I've had them on a few other bikes and they seem to work really well. But you can see there, I could lock it up easily if I wanted to. 30 mile an hour, 31, downhill, 32, 33, 34. And yeah, I could lock the brakes up easily if I wanted to. Now, one thing I love about all the Magicycles is their display on their bikes are very intuitive, very easy to go in and adjust the settings. On this bike, you can adjust the pedal assist settings from three, five, seven, or nine different levels. And you can go in and adjust each one of those levels individually as well to give you whatever power output you want out of each pedal assist level, which is very nice, guys. And another thing that I like about the Magicycles is just the power, the raw power out of this 52 volt battery. You maintain a higher voltage throughout your ride. So when your battery starts to drain, you still have a pretty good amount of power. And you can see that in the last hill test video I did when I went up that hill with a 100% charged battery. And then I also went up it with a 45% uh, battery. And you could see that I didn't lose a whole lot of speed going up that hill. Now, one thing I noticed about this bike, which is a little different and I absolutely love it, is that they have pedal assist zero set so that you can actually still use your throttle. I'm in pedal assist now, but you still have full use of your throttle in pedal assist zero. And then there's also 
a mode called P, which is one less than zero, and I guess that stands for park or pedal. Either way, if you put it in P, it'll just be like you're shutting all the electronics off, and you can pedal it like a normal bike. Your throttle won't work, so very, very nice, guys. You have whatever option you want, whether you want it to just be just the throttle working, or if you want the throttle and the pedal assist to work, or if you don't want anything to work. Really awesome in my opinion. That way, if you're out on the bike trail, you could pedal it like a normal bike and just baby the throttle as you need it and go whatever speed you want. So really nice feature there. You can see right here, I'm in pedal assist zero, just pedaling it like a normal bike. Just hit the power, hit the throttle, and it goes. Now, if I bump it down one to pedal assist P, no throttle and no pedal assist so you have to have it in at least zero through your throttle to work then you have i have mine set to one to f one through five that's how i normally set my bikes because i only need five levels of assist i feel like seven to nine is just too much some of you might like it though and you have full use of your throttle in every pedal assist level as well so now for the different models of this bike they do make a step through model that's actually a true step through unlike their mid-step version of the cruiser pro and it comes in a few different colors it comes in gray this green and a yellow and i believe it comes in those colors in both models now they originally told me they were going to have an off-road version that didn't come with fenders or a rear rack as you can see this one does not have a rear rack on it uh, but i was a little confused about that because then they said that they were all going to come with the fenders that they were going to be included so i'm not sure if there's going to be two different models one without the rear rack and then one with the rear rack and fenders so keep that in mind guys and i don't know the exact price point of it i think it's going to be somewhere around 2500 dollars, and i will have a couple hundred dollar off coupon I'm not sure how long that's going to last but that will be all down in the description of this video if you guys are interested in picking one of these up make sure you use that coupon so that you guys save a couple bucks and if you do use that link, I'll make a small commission at no extra cost to you, which is what helps support this channel and me creating these videos for you, all of you. So thanks in advance, guys. So like I said, they did state that they were all going to include the fenders now, which is really nice. And one reason why I'm glad it does is because where this rear shot goes down in here, that's a little bit open there where your controller sits in there. And uh, I'm glad that they keep the fenders. That will keep a lot of the mud and water out of there. So from my understanding, the rear rack is going to cost around $100. So I'm not sure if they do have two different models of this bike, if that's the only difference and they're going to only be a $100 difference. But in my opinion, I would like to get the rear rack and I'm probably going to go ahead and get one for this because you guys know I like to haul my gear around, especially with cameras and things like that when I'm filming. So I'm a little limited here today on what I can haul on this bike. Now they do have a set of mounting points up front just like on all their other models where you can mount a basket on the front which i'm probably going to put one of those on too because they have really really nice baskets they're aluminum with a wood inlay so i'd like to get one of those for the front of this as well uh, a lot of you might like to keep it simple keep it like this if you're going to use it a lot off-road and don't want that extra weight now this bike does come in weighing 87 pounds when i weighed it on my scale on the website it says 90 pounds but i'm assuming that's with the rear rack so 87 pounds with the batteries guys it is a little bit of a heavy bike but you do get a 20 amp hour capacity battery which is going to be a good bit of that weight right there right off the bat so i would sacrifice a little bit of weight for more range any day in my opinion so one thing I noticed there hitting them bumps, I could hear the back fender rattling a little bit. Uh, doesn't have that rear rack on it to keep it, you know, stiff or up against that rack or whatever. Maybe that would help, not sure, but I did hear it rattling around a good bit back there. You can, I don't know if you guys can hear that. Other than that though, seems like a really sound bike. Suspension seems really good, really nice and soft. Uh, spring oil suspension in the rear and you do have a 
oil spring suspension in the front with hydraulic lockout on it. You do have adjustability there on the front fork. There is some adjustability on the rear. It looked like when I looked up inside the frame, there was a screw that you could spin, but very, very hard to get to. You'd probably have to take the shock out of the bike, adjust it, and put it back in. Would have been nice if they were able to flip that rear shock around to put the adjustment on the outside. Not sure if they would have been able to do that or not, but something to keep in mind. So let's go ahead, try to find a straight stretch and see what kind of speed we can get out of this bike. All right, so I'm not gonna go through each individual pedal assist level because you can go in and change those to whatever you want we will test out one though just to see how fast one is in pedal assist then we'll bump it up into five and get a max speed run check out that little baby deer pretty cool glad i wasn't going fast <laughs> so i do have one set down pretty low for the percentage on one and looks like around seven miles per hour so really nice slow speed there like i said i can go in and change that if i want one to go faster or have more power very nice and easy to do so let's bump us up into five and see what kind of speed we can maintain or see what kind of speed we can get to let's try throttle only first and then we'll do pedal only pedal assist 26 20 looks like about 26 there goes another deer that's scary, 27. So looking like about 27 miles per hour. Now let's try just pedaling. Actually, 28. The cruise control might have set earlier. 27. Looks like a very easy 27 to 28 miles per hour pedaling and this is my legs at full speed actually not too bad i mean there's a little bit of ghost pedaling there but not as bad as some of my other bikes i'm really surprised i'm um, pedaling i mean it is a little fast for my liking at 27 28 miles an hour but i would say pretty safe to say 27 miles per hour easily throttle or pedaling and if I put effort actually into the pedals, cause I was just maintaining a little bit of pressure on there, I'm sure I would have been able to maintain 28, but for how long, not quite sure pedaling at those speeds. So I do have this unlocked to a class three bike. Make sure you guys check your local laws and make sure it's legal in your area and just be mindful and cautious of others, especially if you're out on the bike trail, don't be going speeds like that. We don't need any new laws imposed on the bike trails. So just ride responsibly guys. Now this bike does have, like I said, a 20 amp hour battery and it's using a 25 amp controller to power the 750 watt hub motor in the rear. It's a 52 volt system. Now I do want to mention that in the display, you can only turn the amperage setting up to 22 amps. So it does have a 25 amp controller. According to when I took it out and looked at it, that's what it said on it, 25 amps, but you can only program it up to 22. Now, in my opinion, that's okay. A lot of bikes only come with 22 amp controllers and being that this is a 52 volt bike, you're still gonna get really good output out of it. I would rather have a 25 amp controller that's set to 22 than to have a 22 amp controller set to 22 because in my opinion, it should last a little longer and be less strain on that controller. And while I'm down here in the sunlight, it's a little bit warm right here. So let's go over the specs and features of this bike real quick. Well, the rest of them that I didn't already talk about. <laughs> So up here on the handlebars, you have the same grips as they do on other bikes. The same control pad here for adjusting your pedal assist levels and a cheap bell. I'll be updating that for an AirTag holder bell, which I'm sure you guys seen in some of my previous videos. There will be links to that and all my other accessories that I recommend down in the description of this video if you guys are interested. The same really nice colorful display that they use on other bikes with a USB port in the bottom for keeping your phone charged while you're out on your rides. Over here on the right hand side, we have a half grip twist throttle with a seven speed Shimano shifter, which leads down to the Shimano 14 to 28 freewheel in the rear. It's using a Shimano Altus derailleur coming up the chain to a 48 tooth chain ring in the front and a set of large Welgo aluminum pedals. Right here in the side of the frame, you could see you have a charge port to charge the battery in the bike, or you could take the battery out of the bike and charge it, which is a really nice feature, especially if you were storing the bike somewhere in a cold garage or a shed in the wintertime, you'd want to take that battery inside to keep it conditioned. Up here on the front of the bike, you have a nice set of mounts for mounting a basket. On the front suspension, you can see here you have Tons of clicks for adjustment with a hydraulic lockout, which is really nice to see, and a preload adjuster on the left-hand side. 
For safety, you do have the same headlight that they use on all their bikes here in the front. However, on this version, I did not get the rear rack and there is no rear light. I'm not sure if there's gonna be a rear light on there if you get the one with the rear rack, but there is a plug hanging down underneath the bottom. Not sure if you guys can see it, but there's a plug there that you can actually wire the rear light in. I'm pretty sure that plug is for the rear light. So at least they give you that. And if you wanted to add one later on in the future, it'd be pretty easy to do. Well, like I said earlier, you have a nice set of Bengal hydraulic disc brakes coming down to 180 millimeter rotors on both the front and the rear of the bike and a nice heavy duty adjustable kickstand there. Now the battery on this one is designed a little bit different than on their other bikes. It goes inside the frame here, really nice and hidden which I really like because you can hide an air tag up in here and nobody can actually get to your air tag if they were to steal your bike. So that's one thing that I love about the internal batteries that are in the frames like this because if you could find a way to put your air tag in there and somebody steals your bike and they get notified that they have it and they're being tracked by an air tag, they would have to actually probably destroy the battery getting it out to remove that air tag. Now on the rear suspension, this is where the rear shock is and like i said it is open here down in there where your controller sets your controller is actually bolted to your frame really nicely inside with these two bolts here so it won't rattle around in there but i'm glad that they are keeping these rear fenders on here supposedly the front and rear fenders that would prevent a lot of the mud and water getting down in there now it is open underneath there i don't know if you can see there is an opening that if anything got right here it would go down through there, but I'm sure you could still get some mud up in there if you were riding this thing hard off-road. And the color of this bike, guys, I absolutely love this green color. At first, when I first opened up the box, I didn't think I was gonna like it, but then when I got it out here, I really do like the color. Very, very easy to be seen when you're out riding, which is one thing that I really love. Sometimes I like the look of black bikes, but they are a little bit hard to be seen on when you're out riding them. So if you guys wanna be seen, this is a good option. Another thing for safety, which will help you be seen, is the white reflective strip on both the front and the rear tires. I really like when they put those on there. These are Kenda 26 by four inch fat tires. And you can see here on the rear where there's a bolt hole there. And back here, I believe is where the rear rack would mount if you got the one with the rear rack or if you purchased it separately. Now for the seat height on this one, like I said, it's a half inch lower than the Cruiser Pro. The minimum seat height is 32 and a quarter inches and the max was 38 and a half inches whenever I measured it. All right, so that's pretty much most of the main specs and features of the bike, but let's hop back on this E SUV. Go ahead up the steepest hill in my town and start heading back towards my house before it gets dark. And if you guys found this video helpful, please make sure you guys hit the thumbs up and leave a comment down below because it really helps my channel out. So for the noise on that rear fender, you can see here, when I hit bumps, it makes a little bit of noise. What I'm gonna try to do is loosen these up and try to move these up higher, which will get this up a little bit higher. And I think some of that noise might be coming up from the shock just a little bit. You can see, maybe hear it. The tolerance, wherever it bolts to in there, there's just a little bit of play not really that big of a deal a lot of my scooters are like that and you don't notice it at all when riding but when you're hitting bumps and you're taking the weight off the bike you might hear a little bit of rattle back in there as well try out the suspension a little bit really i'm liking this rear suspension though and I'm 170 pounds. I actually gained five pounds here in the winter time, guys. I'm usually around 165, but I'm 170 right now. Suspension's really nice, really soft. And I don't hear much rattling like that. A Little bit on the fender. I don't hear that shock rattling at all. But the rear fender is rattling a little bit. Let's try this bigger curb. All 
right, we're gonna try a different hill here. This one's pretty steep as well. Probably another one that's probably about as steep as the other one that I came up, that I normally come up. And up it easy, no problem. Probably almost could have made it up without pedaling. All right, so we are on the last long hill before I get back towards my house. I'm actually in seventh gear, which is the hardest to pedal. Just doing that so we can see how much power this bike has pulling me up this hill. I'm gonna go ahead and stop pedaling here. Just use some throttle only. And it's taking me up easily, guys. Really easily up this hill. It's gonna start leveling off here. Now, I wouldn't normally do this. I would normally still put a little bit of effort in like this. I mean, that's almost no effort at all. Because a little bit of your own input goes a long way with help keeping the controller cool, get you extended range, and saving a little bit of life of your motor, keeping your motor cool and things like that. Now it's a pretty cold day here today, guys. It's winter time. So I'm not really too worried about things overheating, but this is pulling me right up this. No problem, just throttle only at 13 miles an hour here. Almost to the top. Now this wasn't a really long trip today. I'm about seven miles in. 7.2 according to the GPS, seven according to the bike. So pretty close on the odometer reading at the top. Very easily up that hill, guys. And this is pedaling full speed. Very nice bike though, guys. Very, very nice. Definitely like it better than the Cruiser. Now the Cruiser is a great bike. Cruiser Pro, great bikes, Ocelot, all that. But I really do love the rear suspension. Now all we need is a rear suspension on an Ocelot Pro model and to make it folding. And man, that would be, that would be an awesome bike if they could make the Ocelot Pro folding and have the power and performance and battery capacity of this with rear suspension, that'd be sweet. Let me know down below in the comments what you guys think. All right, so we are back to the first hill. Let's see what kind of speed we can maintain now. Uh, battery capacity says 61%, but that's not accurate. That's when it's under load. If I shut the bike off and turn it back on, it'll probably show more like around 100%. Actually, let's go in and see what the battery voltage is at, because that's going to be more accurate. Let's go into advanced settings, down to state of charge volts. We'll change it to voltage instead of percentage. And it's showing 52.4 volts. So 58.8 is when it's fully charged. Let's see, 52.4. Let me shut it off, turn it back on, and see what it says. That might have been when it was under load. Oh yeah, 55.7 volts. So 58.8 is a full charge. I only lost three volts of battery capacity. So here we go. At 55.7 volts. Throttle only. Let's see what kind of speed we can get up this hill at. When I had a full battery, it was 10 miles per hour. Let's see if we can maintain that 10 or if it dropped to eight or nine. There's nine. So I lost one mile per hour, losing three volts of battery. Not bad guys, not bad. 